My name is Andrei Kalenichev. I'm director of oil and gas for Dassault Systems, a software company based out of uh, France with uh, offices in more than uh, 100 different countries. So I'm uh, uh, responsible for upstream part of oil and gas in the industry group in uh, my company. So the presentation that I'm going to show you today will be very simple. I'll try to stay as much relevant as possible to uh, our oil and gas. I'll remain very practical, so we're not going to talk about something that cannot be done. And most importantly, I'm, not, I'm going to do no selling. I think we all are driven by the necessity to sell. And in many cases, that really can somewhat cloud our judgment. So no selling on my part. And uh, we'll talk about something that is based on uh, my personal experience and experience of my colleagues for the last 30 years in many different countries that we worked on. We'll see what uh, we can propose as, again, as a very practical step to move uh, forward. So I'll concentrate on three different things. I'll go through a digital transformation definition. I think it's very important to understand what that thing is all about, although I think it's kind of the, the hype is coming down. We have been through that for the last many years, and now the whole noise about this uh, subject is kind of coming down because it's becoming a partially commodity in many places. We'll go and take a look at the examples from other industries. Believe it or not, there are other industries apart from uh, oil and gas and energy. And we'll look at the, again, very practical proposition, how we can move forward with something that hasn't been really done before in oil and gas. So these are three things that I'll concentrate on uh, today. Now, let's look at the definition part for digital transformation, right? The most important part, in my opinion, is, of course, the business process that we're trying to digitalize. Business process really defines how we do things, why we do things, and defines the workflows of uh, uh, various activities in various domains. Of course, we have functionality. In a software world, we have applications which support this or that uh, particular type of uh, activity or segment of the business process. And of course, we have data, information, and knowledge. And in our business, uh, in oil and gas, we are very, very good, in fact, how we uh, handle this information, the volumes, the diversity of data that we use, and things of that nature. Now, we've done absolutely fantastic job with respect to integrating process functionality and data information and knowledge in the segments. If you look at, uh, for example, geology or production or any other vertical of our oil and gas, Things are very well integrated. And in fact, uh, I think last 30, uh, maybe last 30, 40 years, the industry was really uh, aiming to increase that integration, that, con uh, that uh, sorry, that integration, that connectivity within those silos. Now, the integration between different silos of the work process still remains uh, an issue. For, for we have connectivity issues between the databases, we have integration issues with respect to and most importantly, of course, as a result of all of that, we have still have workflows issues uh, at the business process level. Now, uh, uh, again, in the software, we do very well with respect to managing and integrating and digitalizing the entire horizontals. I think we still have uh, lots of room for improvement in our industry. What I'd like to do is I'd like to again prioritize business process as number one entity, as number one level, as number one line to uh, digitalize. And I think this is where we could certainly use some help from other industries, and this is how we can, uh, uh, this is how we can uh, move forward with respect to digital transformation. So from my perspective, I think digital transformation really starts with uh, defining business process, with making sure that this business process is open, uh, you can visualize that, you can optimize that model, simulate, and so on. Now, let's uh, see what we can do with respect to uh, digitalizing that business process in oil and gas. I'll give you a couple of ideas that you probably may find some uh, useful. And there is no, nothing really new, but I think that we certainly need to use holistic, asset-centric approach to the entire oil field. In uh, today's world, again, we are very uh, well connected, integrated, managed models and simulated within the silos. But holistic asset-centric approach for the entire oil field is still missing. 
I was talking to a, a VPO of an oil company some time ago. He told me that they have a, a snapshot of the entire oil field performance anywhere between one and three years' time. That's once in one or three years' time, which is not really the best way to manage the oil field because imagine you're driving a car and you're looking into your floor and only once in three years you uh, put your eyes up and you say, well, I'm still on the highway or motorway and I'm still driving. This is good. So the... Uh, to get a snapshot of how the oil field performs at any point of time will be certainly a product of holistic asset-centric approach rather than concentrating on this uh, vertical. Now, we certainly need to make sure that the business process is driving the entire thing rather than the technology and it certainly when we're looking at the digital transformation it's very important to model and simulate the value of what you're trying to do, right? You need to quantify, you need to make sure that you uh, agree on the outcomes and the results and things of that nature. So the value assessment of the digitalization must be a very mandatory uh, part of uh, what we are trying to do. We certainly could reuse other industries' experience, and I'll show you a couple of examples of that. And uh, very importantly, we spent... Uh, of money on buying technology in in the industry right so we make we need to make sure that we can certainly leverage already made technology investment now we also need to have very strong ability to partner and collaboratively deliver and again i'll show you a couple of examples where that really works because you know you're dealing with multidisciplinary very complex world and of course players in uh, every segment so Let's look at uh, uh, three examples. Let's look at the aerospace. Let's also look at the life science. And let's look at the cities. Cities actually is a really growing business. And uh, it's important to see how these guys uh, are managing this holistic approach to the problem. Now, the aerospace is dealing with incredibly sophisticated assets. The plane, of course, consists of multiple different things, uh, lots of different moving parts, and so on. They were pretty much one of the first industries that implemented a holistic approach to how they model and simulate the plane. So they can design different, but they can also model the entire aircraft and say how this aircraft is going to behave up in the air when uh, something is happening with this or that part. You change the material, how that material is going to be uh, reacting with respect to vibration and so on. So they can look at the entire aircraft and its dependency on various parts that they can change in the digital screen of the aircraft. That's a very good example of how the industry actually approaches that, right? Another totally amazing example, guys, it's a heart. It's a human heart, which could be more in its entirety. And you can uh, look at uh, different parts of this heart and understand what is happening. Not only that, you can actually get the daughters of different disciplines Right, uh, from different geographies, uh, if that's what uh, you want to do, and get their advice on how to uh, feed that heart. So instead of cutting the uh, the person open and uh, uh, getting inside and everything else, you can actually create a artistic, digital overall model of the heart and have different specialists working on that model, proposing the ways to uh, cure the disease. Now, this is really very critical at the project. All of that is uh, active in some uh, uh, in the world. So this is something that is happening today. Another amazing example of how uh, and what people do with respect to holistic approach to solving there, the beautiful city. But uh, not everybody knows that actually this city is completely digitally modern. Right? So there is a static, and most importantly, there is a dynamic model of that city that allows you to uh, look at different aspects of how the city evolves and what uh, the city is doing, and basically say, if this is going to happen, for example, if fire is going to happen here, how this is going to impact my evacuation route from the city? If I have a pollution area in here caused by whatever cause, Right? How this is going to impact the quality of life of people in the residential areas. So this is a very good example where the city was modeled, the digital model was created, but of course they went one step further and they said, well, we're going to provide simulation capabilities in that city. 
which means that you start dealing with dynamic uh, model. And in this particular example, you're looking at uh, uh, simulating an emergency situation, right? And how this is going to, again, impact uh, areas uh, close to it. So, Guinea of Singapore is another example of where they uh, executed kind of a holistic approach to the digitalization uh, uh, program and how they managed to, to do it. Now, this word, digital twin, is all over the place. Everybody is using that. And I think I just wanted to uh, very quickly clarify that how that is uh, structured and what is really involved in making sure that it, uh, it is a very viable part of uh, digitalization efforts that we have in the industry. We start with the data. We start with the data, we build a static model. Static model, we are very good at that in, uh, in oil and gas. We build dynamic models. For those folks who are involved in reservoir uh, business, imagine this is basically, let's say, fluid flow simulation model where you come up with different production scenarios. In fact, based on that dynamic model, whatever your application area is, you build multiple uh, scenarios. Then uh, you analyze those scenarios, you pick the scenario that you like, and of course you take it to a real life. And in our examples, you can take it to uh, building an aircraft, you can take it to uh, curing the heart, you can take it to city management, and of course in our uh, upstream and downstream businesses, the overall approach is exactly the same. Now, you would think that based on your experience in these different models and how they run, you would think that you want to accumulate the knowledge. And obviously, the, the, the further you go, the more knowledge you get, and uh, uh, you arrive at uh, the point where this knowledge can actually be reused uh, in the further models and so on. Now, this is not something that we do very well, in, in my opinion, right? Instead of having this constant improvement, in many cases, we're still trying to redo the same thing and kind of reinvent the wheel, especially uh, if you're looking at, again, holistic management of the, uh, uh, of the oil fields, of the asset and what we do. So the knowledge management is an incredibly important element of the entire digitalization. It allows you to reuse previous experience and to get the improvement every cycle, right? And uh, every time you do something, you start with a more solid base than before, and you do by far better. This is absolutely an opportunity for improvement for the industry. Now, having said all of that, you know, we went through quite a few different topics within this very short period of time. Digital transformation, right? We looked at uh, uh, sort of digital three, and I gave you three quick examples of what we could, uh, what other industries are doing. Let's look at what we can do in oil and gas. And let's keep it very, very simple. Imagine this is a surface. And of course, we have a, a variety of different facilities, right? We also have operations. There are people driving trucks. You, know, you go to uh, uh, my favorite state of Texas uh, in the West, and there are trucks all over the place around Midlands, Odessa, and that area, right? And you have the reservoir. Reservoir is, by the way, something that we probably invest the most uh, when we are developing the oil field. You need to build a model, you need to drill wells, and so on. Now, there are three distinct parts to this uh, uh, kind of oil field, probably more. But you're looking at the surface facilities, you're looking at reservoir, and you're looking at operations that you actually produce, uh, that you, you uh, conduct on this uh, oil field. The idea is that we define some very fundamental workflows that impact the uh, uh, overall oil field management. And those workflows would include the three uh, uh, segments. For example, you could say that if I'm going to start injecting water in uh, my wells, is that going to impact my requirements for production equipment? And how is that going to impact my requirements for changing uh, maintenance schedules and things of that nature? And you start building a unified oil field management system that would address the, again, the holistic approach to the oil field for model, simulate, and optimize perspective. So you apply three uh, elements of action on, on this. You create a static model of the entire field, and it doesn't have to be really deep and complex. You have that complexity in the silos, but you really integrate that at the business process level. You start simulating from the business perspective on the oil field level, and you come up with opportunities for 
optimizing and improving overall performance of the oil field. Now, sounds like nirvana, right? It's like, you know, the world is going to be better tomorrow. It actually will. But um, the important part is that this is something, this approach has been executed in quite a few industries, right? So uh, I think there's a fantastic opportunity for us to not to be too scientific here, but really approach that from the business angle and say, this is what I want. I want to have a snapshot of my oil field performance. I want to see how my exploration is going to impact production in an automated model and simulation mode and things of that nature. And really deploy the platform for making that happen. In manufacturing world, these guys use uh, what they call PLM, product life cycle management approach, and many companies are very well aware of that. In uh, uh, EPC world, they use very simple, uh, sorry, very similar, not simple, very similar uh, approaches to integrate their incredibly sophisticated, complicated, and large projects. We really could use this opportunity to do the same in, uh, in the world. So this is basically, uh, consider that as an invitation to open up the discussion of what we uh, could do, and most importantly, how we could use other industries' experience to uh, improve our oil field, right? And uh, the, the purpose of this presentation, of course, was not to educate anybody on, on anything. You guys know uh, by far more uh, than me on any subject. The purpose of this presentation was to say, look, we have an opportunity to use the platform that was used in other industries in the oil, in the oil field. This is just one of the examples how we can do it, link these three different uh, domains. Let's have conversation and let's discuss that further and see what we could do together. Now, just to summarize, thank you very much for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. So the name is uh, Andre Klenicer. So again, I'm responsible for steam oil and gas sector in uh, the industry group of Dassault Systems. By the way, just to make sure that uh, you don't forget, it's one of the largest world uh, companies. Uh, the important part about the Dassault Systems is that we are incredibly diversified in multiple industries. And of course, that's why uh, I got exposed to what uh, other people are doing and uh, really believe that there is an opportunity to reuse that in our oil and gas. So give me a shout. Send me an email, see if we can uh, really start building something together. Thank you very much, and thank you, uh, thank you for your attention and your time. Goodbye.